This is an exciting, exciting celebration of new facilities for Goose Creek CISD. We are so happy that you decided to be here and join us and share in our excitement for providing this community a state-of-the-art facility, our robotics facility. Let's give a round of applause for our board of trustees. Hughes Creek's known for its vision for providing facilities for the community, and uh, today is going to be a good example. This uh, little rendering here to my right is does not do justice. You get a glimpse of it, but it really does not do justice as to you, what you will be able to walk through. In how long, Dr. McCall? Nine months? Six months? By Friday. <laughs> By Friday. By Friday. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> We have with us today, I'd like to make just a few introductions. We have today with us our president of the Goose Creek CISD School Board, Mr. Richard Clem. <laughs> Making sure no other board members slipped in. I don't want to overlook anyone. Uh, please give a round of applause, if you will, stand up my executive council. Please stand up my executive team. Thank you for being here. All other Goose Creek CISD administrators, including our facilities management team members, please stand up. Our community engagement team, the ones who put this thing together so you can see it, wave to us. Nutrition Services, who provide us with our meals. Thank you for being here. Those are all employees. So let's get on with the celebrities. <laughs> we want to thank Connie Tilton, our partner in education oh, with Exxon. And thank you for being here. Along with her is Lee College Regent Gilbert Santana. And Gina Guillory. And who's that person sitting between them? Our Lee College President, Dr. Linda Villanueva. Our Mayor, Mr. Brandon Capitillo. City Manager, make it. I'm looking, I'm looking. Rick Davis, are you here? All right. Other City Council members, do we have anyone else, Mr. Mayor? I don't see them. They told me they're going to be here. But. <laughs> don't, want, <laughs> don't want to overlook anyone. Uh, do we have members of our Chamber of Commerce, Baytown Chamber of Commerce? Anyone here? All right. Well, let's move on and give credit to the geniuses Yay. with the design flair, our architects. Uh, our architect is Stan Tech for this project. Laura, Chris Hopkins, we want to give them a round over here. Our contractor, Comex Corporation with David Walker, Ricky Trant, and Sal Luna. Now, would you please rise with me and join me um, as we have invocation, led by Jeremiah Ziegler of Faith Family Church, followed by the pledges to the U.S. and Texas flags, led by our Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Demetrius McCall. Hey, we are honored to partner with you guys. My name is Pastor Jeremiah from Faith Family Church. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this wonderful facility, these faculty and staff members, representatives of the city. God, we pray that your blessing would be on this land, on this building. God, we pray that this would be a place of unity and love, not division and hate, but God, that your hand would be on this facility as it raises up as a beacon of light to our community for moving forward and allowing students a safe place to grow and develop. It's in your name that we pray today. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Please join me in the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the Texas Pledge. Honor, Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. You may be seated. Thank you. Wow. 
Um, they told me I only had an hour to talk this morning, so <laughs> it may warm up a little bit. I could talk for an hour about this facility because the vision has been a long time coming. And we're excited that uh, you get to see a glimpse of it today. That you, you were here when the ground was broken on this facility, and it was blessed by one of our local pastors. Thank you, Jeremiah. Um, I could talk on and on, but we'll get straight to the chase. The original vision sort of began when we partnered up with a group of guys from NASA. Jim Fox and Mr. Chris Verdian uh, are, are actually engineer scientists at NASA and we were able to engage partnership with them back in the early 2000s, I believe it was. Ms. Dillon uh, is, uh, has not been here quite that long, but shortly thereafter joined Goose Creek uh, and has been here a dozen years or more. With her vision, connecting with them, uh, the robotics facility has really, really come to fruition through the competitions that we go to. Uh, the, the name of the uh, robotics team, if you haven't heard it yet, is uh, unique. I don't know who takes full responsibility for that, but we are the Largo Fish. So, <laughs> winning uh, many state, national, and world competitions, right team? Yes. Our teachers, Ms. Bechtel, I think she's been with the program for five years or more. Ms. Bechtel, thank you. And I think Ms. Dillon deserves a round of applause. Being the PPE director of the state. We know, uh, and then we could not do this. We would not be here if it wasn't for parent involvement. Miss Dillon, one of the things that impressed me when I first got here eight years ago was she was really into these things called steering committees. And she refused to make a decision without getting a group of stakeholders into the building. Parents, architects, engineers, making sure that an executive team to make sure that we understood what the needs of our students would be. And one of those parents is with us today. I want to recognize Miss Yassel Amador, right here with the uh, wonderful Blargo Fish hat on. That's a trademark for Blargo Fish, and uh, all the kids wear that at competition. It's really, really cool. Miss um, Amador, I think um, you have five children in the Goose Creek schools, or have been in the Goose Creek schools, is that right? Three, Three now, okay. So, uh, <laughs> well, I think when you had three at all. No, the bargles that they count, those are, you know, 20, so 23, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you found them all there. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, she's been with the program for quite a, quite a while, and the, the unique thing that she just uh, had a conversation with me about, Adolfo, her oldest, came through the program, came through robotics program, and, uh, and he was the driver, if you know anything about competitions. It's the person that holds the remote that moves the machine around in the arena. And Adolfo has gone on a um, full ride to Rice University, wow. graduated with, I think, five degrees. And she said, you know, it really all comes back to his connection with robots. Because his future career will be a, neuro, a neurosurgeon. And we all know, just from watching TV, that neurosurgeons use robotics when they operate on the brain. So he will be able to use something he learned as a ninth grader, maybe before, before. junior high. He was a third grader. Third grader when third we grade. began. So thank you for making that point. Uh, the original vision for this center was for high school students. And because there was such interest in our junior high schools and our elementary high schools, the vision grew and the vision expanded. And the facility that we're here to break ground on today is for all of our students. And that's exciting for us. It, it was relocated from the Lee High School campus to here in the center of town so that it can serve every single campus in the school district. So we are excited to be able to provide this type of uh, future thinking and this type of technology for our students. It's no different than literacy for young children, learning how to read and write, but to have technology at your fingertips for those same children all the way up through high school because it will impact their careers far beyond the time that we have them. One other group I'm not sure that I, I called out was, I wanna make sure we recognize the people responsible for the building of this. We, have, we recognize the architect, we recognize the uh, contractor, I'm not sure I recognize the facilities team led by Dr. McCall, but would y'all please stand and let us recognize you? 
Mr. Riz, Ms. Garcia, your team. Jesse, where are you at? All right, they're on duty over there. Ed, Ed, stand up. Ed, stand up. Ed's the tall one in the family. All right. We will momentarily be breaking ground, but I wanted to allow Mr. Clem to come up and just say a few words about the board's vision uh, in regards to how this has morphed from a little bitty project into a project that will serve every single student in Goose Creek. Mr. Clem, I believe Ms. Dillon wanted to say a few words following you. Okay, I, I will be, well, I'm going to say I'll be brief, but y'all know better than that. <laughs> All right, so we got a graduation, a summer graduation last night, and I sat down next to Dr. McCall, and he goes, you're bad. <laughs> and I say, I was not that kid. All right, let's go back to Adolfo. Um, I have been around for a long time. I was here in the early 2000s, and these kids started walking through the band hall. Adolfo was in orchestra, right? But he spent a lot of time in the band hall. And uh, they would have these barglefish shirts on, or pins, or hats, or whatever. And of course, being the intelligent person I am, I went to Google. It did exist then. And um, figured out what a blurgle fish was. And then Adolfo would fill me in and tell me about all these wonderful things. Of course, I was all in because first, the blurgle fish is too cool. And second of all, anything to do with kids being as engaged as he was, uh, I, it's something we have to do. But I want to try out something on you today because I, ha I have been thinking about this and I think today is the day to introduce a nickname. What if we put maybe under Goose Creek CISD, the tank? Because we finally have a home for our blargo fish. <laughs> Don't decide today, just, just think about it. Maybe that could be the unofficial nickname, but I'm so happy they have a home. The other thing I want you to know, and I know a lot of you already know this, but for those of you who don't, uh, there, there are kindergarten teachers and technology specialists in our elementary campuses that are already calling and trying to book time in this building. And we're having to say, uh, but the, the excitement is everywhere. And I want to thank everybody involved in this project. Uh, while the board gets some thanks for approving the funds, the, the vision has come from Mrs. Amador and her kids and the ones who banded together and just kept plugging until this becomes a reality. So thank you for that. Y'all have a great day. So basically, anything I would have to say, Dr. O'Brien, of course, has already said. But I do want to, to take this a step further in that we've, we've talked about robotics and the role of robotics, but this is STEM, and STEM has had uh, amazing growth. We went from less than 100 students a decade ago to over 1,500 students in our STEM programs. And the STEM Academy at Lee High School has a small robotics component curriculum that builds it. And we have just worked super hard district-wide to build that interest. Like, um, like Clem said, all the way from the kindergarten level, they're with their spheros, moving them down the hallway. So this is just an, a culmination of all the work that the district's been doing over the last decade just to build that STEM program. You know, we have so much support from the community, from Cavestro, like from ExxonMobil, from all our corporations to come in and work with our students, just like Mr. Fox did, you know, as a, as a, a you know, a, Clearing the road, beginning that just by even setting that model with our barbell fish. And so, you know, just that vision, that focus that, that the district has taken over the last last 10 years, K through 12, to build the STEM programs is amazing. So, you know, hardworking teachers, these if you don't know what the barbell fish do, they're here until late at night their whole season. The hours these teachers put in, the dedication that takes we have a lot of people who fall off from the district. They just fall off to the roadside because they can't handle the hours, the dedication that they put in. And um, the fact that Mr. Fox, the Amador, everybody has stayed with it that long just shows how much they deserve this center. And but and like I said, but it's a true reflection of a change in mindset that comes from the top. 
that has just changed the vision of, of our district into becoming a true STEM, di STEM district. So um, I just want to thank everybody who has had a part of it. It's been a huge project. It's been a fun project. And, um, and so again, just thank you for everyone who's had so much input on the design. So now I want to invite up Mr. Capetillo to talk about the city vision. Well, I wasn't really prepared to speak, but I, I think I can probably come up with a few things. So it's a unique groundbreaking. Uh, obviously, we had a lot of groundbreaking uh, in Goose Creek schools over the past year or two. If it's schools and different career academies, uh, I tell you what, my calendar gets filled up really quick with all of them. There's another one today with the Early Childhood Center, so very exciting. But I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about kind of our vision of the city. Having our, our students here in Goose Creek schools to go and be career ready. We, from a from a mayor standpoint, from a city standpoint, having citizens that can go and be employed, if it's uh, in industry or in anything, we continue to see Goose Creek schools do that and, and uh, accomplish that mission. So Miss Dillon and this whole street is almost like Career Street almost is what we should, I know we talked about some renaming, but Career Street, because we're getting people ready, we're doing that, and then if they go to Lee College, the partnership with Goose Creek Schools and Lee College uh, is just excellent. We're getting people employed with, with skills and knowledge. And I can't, from a mayor's standpoint, I can't ask for anything more. Uh, I will put a, a little bit, you know, a lot of people don't think that I have another job. I actually have another job <laughs> besides municipal government. And uh, uh, I guess in my career, I spent 10 years at NASA, Johnson Space Center. And, and some of the folks that were kind of right next to where, where we were at um, was the bioastronautics engineering folks. And so some really cool things I saw there um, when people, when we talk about going to other planets and other things, um, they're like, well, do you think we're going to send humans there? And my honest answer is we probably will send some humans there, but I don't think it will be that. I think it will be a hybrid of uh, some um, some robotics, some um, some things that, that will go and, and be able to do things that the human body can't do out in, in space in those environments. So going and knowing that, that what's going to happen in this building, is it's going to contribute to that. Whatever that whatever these folks do, these kids, when they get into their adulthood and their careers, if it's a neurosurgeon or whatever, they're going to be contributing at a high level. And that's what's going to happen here. In the, I'm, I thought you were going to say tank because it's like a think tank like because you're going and, and this is higher level thinking, higher level uh, challenges that these kids are, are uh, accomplishing right here. Um, in this in this think tank, but, I like that better. Well, you know, I'm here to improve things anytime I can, right? So. But no, I just wish all the very best. Thank you. Obviously, there's a lot of people involved, and this is this is certainly a great day for our city too. As long as we don't go with fishbowl. No. <laughs> We're also grateful for our partnership with Lee College as a visionary for careers as well. The STEM program at Lee College is unmatched, and so for us to step up our game and try to facilitate children's readiness to join the uh, higher ed uh, field is, is just remarkable. And I'm very, very, very proud to serve as superintendent of this school district. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share before we get on with the shovel of dirt throwing is uh, we have two types of programs, capital project programs in Goose Creek. One is a bond program. Uh, bonds are something that we do a lot of due diligence to ensure that we're not going to our taxpayers and asking them to do more than what is essentially needed. And uh, so the robotic center was not included in the bond project in 2019, but it did not defer our board from saying we have capital funds for a reason. The reason is to fill in the additional facilities that will enhance Goose Creek CISD to be a district of destination that other school districts across not only Houston, the state and the nation will want to come to. And if you're not familiar with it, we've gone above and beyond having our academy certified as a state certification. We've received national certification so that other school districts can come and see how we do it. And that's really, really something that gives me great pride as your superintendent, and it should for you as well. I think at this time, it, we're seeing it with UPS, the Postal Service, so this is the real deal right here. Thank you.